Tell me, R, oh, tell me, T, tell me, sweet little X. Sweet little X. And we crash. And welcome back to Linux Gamecast Weekly, the show to cover the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how tos, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. That's right, it is your Mayo infused host. I'm Vin Stone, that's Jordan Sveng, and down there. Spread it. Spread evenly. One Peodro Mateus. Apparently, we're still hitting pe- the crunch. Pe- peo- <laughs> Peodro? It's, it's Pedro Mayonnaise? I don't know, Pedro- man. Pedro Nays? Pedro Light. Hello, it's brilliant. <laughs> Chat room dynamic, also brilliant. Join us live each and every Saturday night, helping us form cocaine vulture on this right do not mix your cocaine with mayo or do take a picture Dude, send it it, to us. listen it's it's gonna make your sandwich awesome <laughs> it's gonna make something <laughs> awesome i mean <laughs> maybe your sandwich maybe your life who knows part man part sandwich oh mayo uh <laughs> that, gentlemen that, 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 that's me that's me that's that's you? half man half sandwich all <laughs> oh, mayo. mayo canada's best kept secret what have you been up to baby anything new uh no not much just trying to get shit together um, so that I can leave for a week and be in Vegas for a conference where I'm getting. I have to. I have to schmooze. So social mm. social Jordan has to come out of like the basement the he's chained up in. <laughs> yeah. So your cocoon, he's... everyone, you're thinking of like, oh, like butterflies, and like no, like alien. Mm-hmm. No, it's like um, what, <laughs> what, 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 was, what, what was the name of the vampire from uh, Nosferatu, like Lord Murloc or something? Steven. Phil. It was. He's trying to Google something. Orlock, yeah. Count Orlock. <laughs> there you go. Count Count Orlock. Yeah. <laughs> Pedro, what you up to, man? I well, the only thing I've been doing out of the ordinary is drilling some holes on the uh, the steam box and um, I was trying to find some teeth. quiet red LED fans to put in El Cheapo so I could take pictures and put it on PC Park Picker. Oh, you didn't want to like. You, uh, if you're taking a picture, man, they won't know. They could be loud. <laughs> That's the thing. I've already taken the picture. It's like, yes, it's the cheapest computer you can get. And then it's like, okay, so what if you wanted to upgrade that cheapest computer? What would that go? But I need some red LEDs because everyone's posting pictures with LEDs nowadays. So No, no. Yeah. See, what you, what you do is you bring it into GIMP, and then you, like, make really crap illumination effects. <laughs> and you upload the picture. Pew, pew, pew. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> It'll yeah. be science, man. That'll be kind of brilliant. Dude. No, this is what it looks like in real life. See, here's a photo of it. Yeah, right? Oh, see, that's the double thing, though. You actually pull that effect off of it, like, legitimately to where it looks shot. Mm-hmm. Then you can send the video and you're like, oh, where's your flying spaghetti monster now, bitches? <laughs> just, make ah. a qu- just make the people on PC Park Picker question reality. Oh, again <laughs> and again and again. I was questioning reality. We were talking about the pre pre super shows and men. I've been teach, teaching a teenager how to drive. There were no survivors. I, I've seen things, man. I've dealt with things. And um, that's a parent's responsibility. But um, I'm getting my good deed for 2020 out of daddy, the way. Daddy, then? No. no. <laughs> um, teach me how to drive, daddy. Nah, man. <laughs> See, if it was my own child, I'd be like, oh, you're insured. Here, go have fun. Um, <laughs> no, daddy doesn't love you. Don't take that car or that. No, here. Take this one. Let me show you how to drive a stick real quick. All right, go. Um, <laughs> Take pretty- the Challenger. Make sure it doesn't kill you. <laughs> pretty much, man. Outside of that, I beat the Weezer. What did the trolls call it? I think. Um, the the, the Vavitcher. 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 And um, <laughs> beat that. If you're wondering, if you want to power Vin 9000 your way through that, and there's like 17 hours, like no side quests, just like, I got to get this game. Stop. And it finally did. <laughs> I was happy. I was proud of it. I mean, that, that, that's a good amount of game, considering they were like charging, what, 60 bucks on release? That was something yeah. like that, yeah. man. And if you're wondering, it's like, where are you playing? Uh, you can play it with Proton now. So now you can get your Vulcan on. And it runs every, of course, a game, it's almost a decade old game. It should. But like everything, even with Uber sampling on the 2060, 1080p, it was holding 60. So. No. Yeah. <laughs> good times like that. Kind of like the horse. I mean, it wasn't all jagged, but it was running the Vulcans. I mean, the horse is smooth and in its sort of putty-like consistency. You can <laughs> now. Now I just have a mental image of like Whoopi Goldberg and Demi Moore like molding the horse together in like a ghost-esque romantic ghost scene. horse. It's the Steam Linux update. Oh, oh my God! They the killed Kitty. Valve time. 
The mid Kenny. Apparently, <laughs> they're already done with that. Fine. Yeah, they, 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 they killed Kenny two years ago. Now they're just telling us about it. <laughs> yeah, so uh, there, there was a bit of an AMA that happened. Did on, you ever see Mad TV with like Kenny Rogers? He was always eating Rogers, the fried this chicken. Jackass. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they had him drink all that milk, and he started throwing up. Yeah, that was pretty good. Okay, and then they just take turns whacking him in the balls. Yeah. <laughs> um, speaking speaking of being whacked in the balls, uh, many people feel like they were whacked in the balls waiting for Half Life Three to come out. Mm-hmm. And yeah, so there was, there was an AMA on Reddit. Valve did one in promotion for uh, Half Life Alex coming out. One one of a couple things they've announced regarding that. Uh, and yeah, we, we we got we got to learn a little bit about the development cycle. They basically kept it under wraps for a while. They said we we front loaded the Valve time. We didn't we didn't actually tell you about the game until it was pretty much done. They still they're still working on like accessibility for like one handed play and seated mode and whatnot. But the the core game itself is pretty much done. There's there's gonna, there's going to be some tweaks here and there, but that that that's it. Um, the other the other thing they bring up in the AMA is apparently you might remember a year or two ago when we were talking about S- Epistle Three, where uh, apparently the plot to Half Life Three got released and everyone's like, oh, Lane mm-hmm. lost pissed mm-hmm. at Valve, blah blah blah, and apparently he's been consulting on this project the entire time. So the, apparently that internet drama sauce is complete and utter falsehood. <laughs> Uh, no, nah. <laughs> really. I, I want Internet to rumor mill was wrong. <laughs> it, it's impossible. <laughs> C'est impossible. I'm glad that Alex is actually going to come out this year. I mean, but don't you feel like a little um, bit nervous, like saying a Valve game is going to come out? Like, I, I mean, the last two that they put out were kind of shit, but. Mm-hmm. That also brings up the fact that, oh yeah, you know that series that people have been wanting to play more of since 2007? Yeah, let's make the new entry in that particular series a VR exclusive. Well, I, I can I can see the rationale. Val- Valve has been pretty public about their desire to like push VR as the next big thing. And like it de- it definitely does seem like from like the AMA and the materials that we've been we've been shown so far that they've put a lot of effort into like improving the fidelity of mm. the Half Life series, and it I have I have no doubt that it will be like technically very well done. Uh, I and think I'm it sure will definitely I'm, I'm be sure they're well gonna release done. like a PC non VR version. I am sure play. there's gonna you'll be able to play it without. Yeah, the, but I mean they're making this thing run on toasters too. I mean you you can play it on all the VR things. And... It, it is still using the source. It's source too, but it is still using the source engine. So mm-hmm. yeah, that'll run on just about anything. The yeah, but the uh, the idea of having to pay well, if you're paying the index price, you're paying a thousand pounds. That's the price of a brand new PC for just the VR hardware. Mm-hmm. Well, and I I, I can <sighs> understand that, that Valve saying, hey, you should have gone out and bought the index. And there's not a lot of like high quality games for it. Here, they're 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 trying to fix the problem. At least they're saying here's they're an example trying to of show well people how to do a proper VR. I get that, and hopefully it, it will be a great game. But something tells me it well, won't hey, be. They're working on one handed mode, so even you can play it. Yeah, yeah, I'll probably try it because I know Dave has a. Um, VR headset, so I might have to tech myself uh, to Dave one of these days. And it's like, no, you take me home, you let me play, Alex. Can can we just have like the Tuesday streams it's just, just being a record, just a recording of Pedro in the VR setup? They're, they're we, we don't, we don't attach, get to see any gameplay. to tape a mop handle to his head. It's going to be inhumane and cruel, and we're absolutely going to film it. But uh, RetroArch, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, RetroArch, they are finally releasing on Steam. And the way they're doing it is kind of interesting. They've been working really, really hard. They've gone to the developers of all the various RetroArch cores and got permission to distribute them on Steam because a lot of them are GPL licensed. Um, they're, they're, ver- they're very big on saying, like, this is still an open source project. We're not charging you money for it. Calm your tits. Mm-hmm. But um, what what they are doing is there's going to be the RetroArch app, and then all the various cores are going to be DLC, which is actually a pretty clever way of handling it, I think. Yes, um, right. <laughs> be- because then you can only get the stuff that you care about, and you don't have to download an entire package and keep those all up to date. Um, they're also shipping a boatload of cores, too, like Croco DS, Caprice, Parallel 64, then has the list strolling by. If you don't have, if you can't see that because you're an audio listener, the link to that's in our show notes. But yeah, they're saying we're we're not shipping any ROMs. This is not for piracy. This is for people yep. who want to have emulation software available on Steam because mm-hmm. you have the CD-ROM or whatever. And they're saying we're we're working hard to like make sure that when you pop a CD-ROM into your computer, it'll get detected by RetroArch. And 
Away you go. Hmm. Yep, and uh, this is going to make when they do release it, because Retroarch is still not available on Steam, but when they do release it, the Steam box is going to be an awesome, awesome TV box, and it'll play everything. I know yeah, for a fact that Nori's been going like, I want to play the old Sonic games, like, uh, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, this, this, so, is, this yeah. is a huge value add for big picture mode. Like, oh, it holy is. Shit. Yep. And as long as everything works fine and there's no... Then how do you get the ROMs on, though? Oh, uh, well, I mean, they, the they, they, can, <laughs> they, they conveniently leave that part out because then uh, they'd probably be breaking some laws in the or getting some. Uh, uh, yeah, at Nintendo. least promoting piracy or something like that. I'm sure Nintendo would jump all over them the, the moment they but, did that. But I mean, Isn't I'm sure that if you kind Google, of like installing Plex for home movies. Listen, I'm it's, sure it's the, like, uh, so, the... It, then it is 100 percent like my butter infuser, right? It's for making rosemary or garlic butter, right? Quote unquote, mm -hmm. box full of like cannabis leaves and shit. Like, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Say no more, say no more. Not this goes to a blind bat. Am I right? I'm just imagining all the mayonnaise in the tree. Mm. Oh man, so so much cannabis mayonnaise, so much. <laughs> Not a show title. Don't waste your time. Games radar. Ah, boom. Boom. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, speaking of uh, Half Life, Alex, uh, this. Well, leading up to Half-Life Alex, uh, Valve are going to be making the, Aww. well, look at the Edgy Freeman. Half-Life yeah. games that are available up to this point free. You can just go to Steam and you can play the games for Both free. of you. you won't That's do. right. Yes. Both of you can get it now. <laughs> the two people out there that still don't have like Opposing Force and Blue Shift, yeah. now you can play them for free. I and, really um, like In all Force. fairness, I've not played either of those. Blue Shift kind of sucked, but I, I really uh, <laughs> liked Opposing Force. <laughs> but yeah, the, originally the story kind of leaked because, well, it, it showed up on either Steam Translate or wherever Incorrect. the hell else. Incorrect. It showed up because people were getting the notifications for it oh, yeah, okay. on Steam itself. <laughs> so I guess it was Valve's fault. Okay, cool. Uh, but yeah, it is. Yeah, they're just making it available. You don't get to keep them. You can still buy them there, but... Yeah, if you do take advantage of like the free up until uh, Half Life Alex re is released in March, you do get to play those games for free if somehow you hadn't already. I don't know how you, you would actively have gone out of your way not to. Um... I, I mean, like the, there there are people who still haven't seen like Star Wars, right? I'm sure these people do exist, and. You know, you know what? I'm I'm fine with Valve making these games free to play, right? They're yeah. they're good games. <laughs> if if you and they 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 run on modern hardware. If you want to give them a shot, oh this, sure, this is the a good way to onboard people. Next, you're going to try to tell me that some people on the internet are upset that they're not going to be forever free; that they're only get to, to play them. Oh, oh, dude! Free. When 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 Half Life Alex comes out, there's going to be a deluge of people being like, "I was halfway through the game and I can't finish it now." <laughs> Ruins. Mm, half life. I don't sucks. know about deluge, but there will be some. Oh yes. man, you see that little <laughs> bit of faith in the humanity sauce uh, was completely. You remember the um, serious <laughs> Sam three when the beta for that was free on Linux, and then they're yes. like, "Hey, it's done. It's out. Now you have to buy it." Like, but but I helped by playing the game for free for months, and you should give me a copy. This is unfair and unjust. Go, <laughs> Dino Fire. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes, there was that. But again, these games, the latest one came out in 2007. So, yeah, I'm guessing everyone's already played through them. Fair enough. Uh, Jordan. Uh, I, I, yep. Faster yep. than light. Takes a poop. That's not 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 so much pooping, but uh, they're they're getting some they're getting some chibos. Um, yeah, uh, they're they're already kind of like internal achievements for Half Life. Seven you have to, years later. Seven years later. I mean, um, there 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 were actually some achievements in Half Life or not Half Life. What am I talking? Yeah. about? Yeah, FTL, faster than light. <laughs> no, baby, faster new than game. Half Life. Fast, fast, faster than Half Life Three. Everything <laughs> is faster than Half Life. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they, they're, they're implementing Steam achievements. There were some uh, achievements internally to unlock ships, but now 
uh, but now they're making some actual achievements. The li the list is available. Some of them are kind of dull. Some of them are like fun little challenges you can do if you're kind of bored of playing just the default campaign and you want to try and do some cheapo fishing. It's not as tightly integrated into the game as say something like Into the Breach where the achievements were tied to the actual progression where if you wanted to unlock more mechs, you needed to get the currency from the achievements. Mm. But I mean, whatever. It, 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 if you if you have a Freudian impulse to in, extend your EP in FTL. I, I kind of get to imagine that the people that are still hammering on FTL and like, I don't need any achievements for this addiction, this it's crippling like addiction. Bonus what? soda. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty, pretty much. Yeah. And uh, if, um, say... Ska Studios decided to introduce the achievements that, uh, you know, would complement, say, you finished the game with X amount of challenges enabled, or you finished the game with this challenge enabled. I would replay the shit out of some more Salt and Sanctuary, but they haven't, so mm. I'm still done with that game. <laughs> So, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, uh, those of you who have clicked on the timestamp and you're like, I drum, drum shut roll, up, please. monkeys. I just want to hear this one thing. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Yay. Yay. Ending support for Mac OS and Linux. Ah, this news comes courtesy of, you might have guessed it, RocketLeague.com. You mean Epic Slash Games? Psionics team. They have a little announcement. To be fair, let's read it. Um... As we continue to upgrade Rocket League with new technologies, it is no longer viable for us to maintain support for, I didn't see this one coming, Mac OS, did see this coming, Linux platforms. As a result, the final patch for Mac OS and Linux versions game will be in March. This update will update things like completely nerfs online functionality because we know everyone bought Rocket League for the single player campaign. Therefore, I'm just mm -hmm. making that part up, but offline features, including local matches, and the split screen play will still be accessible. If purchased Rocket League for Mac or Linux and Steam, the game will still work with full functionality, except for the one you bought it for uh, when played on a computer running Windows 7 or newer. Right, we, we, we update the technology, right? Go fuck yourself. Snidely Whiplash, Tim Sweeney, rolling in money. Yeah. Honestly, I expect this. I expected this a bit earlier because they said that up until September, everything will still be updated and the game would still be fine on Steam. I expected September would be the month that they went, yeah, that Linux version? Fuck that Linux version. I I, no. I, I'm, I would have thought that it was going to be a little bit later. They would have at least maybe waited until they get the shopping cart implemented in the <laughs> store so that you can buy multiple DLC no. at the same time. Mm. That's not going to happen. Uh, but yeah, no, you, you can't even play online with just friends like private matches. You can't even do that after March just to rub the extra salt in the wound, you ginormous cunts. No. We were not, I, I went back and looked and like, what did we say when, when we first, you know, had this news and we were talking on the show and it was pretty much around like, uh, maybe we'll get in like a quarantined Steam version that they'll never, then they'll have the Epic Store version with the new features and all that. And you have to get it over there if you want to continue playing. I didn't see this nuclear option because, you know, I guess far enough out. I can be like, okay, I could see them killing the Linux, but killing the Mac, it's like, damn, that's next level, son. I mean, it does, as I posted on the Twitters, on the social media, it's like, kind of speaks volumes about the cross-platform um, right. gusto of the Unreal Engine. Maybe something you want to keep in mind when um, develop, picking a game engine for your next game. But Windows users, I don't think they saw that them getting rattled was going to be a thing, which to their credit... They got the rattled because they're like, this doesn't stop here, Brad, which it won't. Um, yeah, s signs and portents. I mean, and and they, so here's the thing, too. They, they do say in the Steam forums, that in the forum post there, that, oh, yeah, Proton might work. It's not officially supported. So this, this is in before they implement uh, easy anti-cheat uh, immediately after the and final And that Linux just patch. ruins Proton and Wine and everything else. Yeah. yeah. Just, but I'm going to uh, DX11, man. I'm going to roll with my thing here because, uh, you know, you don't nix these revenue streams for this uh, unless you get a really good reason. Because, I, you know, they say their new technology. They're saying their new technology is mm -hmm. DX11, which makes goal sense, period. We yep. were talking the previous super shows, <laughs> and it's like, uh, Vulcan would make sense. It's the Java of graphic APIs. Um, I'm almost 100% sure the new technology is 
going to be when you click play, it downloads, installs, and launches the Epic Store, kind of like you see with a uh, Uplay or with GTA V. You're going to get their or own origin. Yeah. Origin. Yeah. You're going to be seeing that type of launcher, and I don't think anybody's going to be happy about that. I mean, you, I mean, to, to, to your to your point about the the portability of Unreal Engine Four, right? Like, mm-hmm. yeah. In, in, ter- in terms of technical debt, I, we I I put this in the show notes before the news, the actual truth, the, mm-hmm. the tea dropped. I'm like, I'm, I'm curious if they hit a wall with like their hacked up UE three version, or if they're planning on moving something to UE four because that would be a really really poor self admission on like yeah the UE four. Well, if they're not moving for, it to uh, Unreal Mac Engine Linux, four, like, garbage. M- not moving it to Unreal. F- or it speaks volumes about a UE4 now, doesn't it? It does. Yeah, yeah, yeah it does. That, 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 that's and, kind of my um, point. Is the cross-platform yeah. support really isn't there? Not even the cross-platform. That's not much faith in the engine. Period. If they're not moving, if like, and we're just going to stick with Windows. Sub- okay, got to pour one out for our brothers and sisters on Mac because their option is boot camp. Go buy some Windows. Yeah, go buy. Yeah, go no, buy they literally license. bring up. It's like, yeah, Linux users, you get Proton, so at least you get to keep using Linux. If you're if you're on Mac, yeah, load up Windows on Boot Camp. F you. But then so, so, Rumlock in Discord decided, you know what? Yeah, no, th- there's more information on the uh, Rocket Car subreddit. So uh, here's what Cyanex Devon had to say. And uh, yeah, like Ven already mentioned, apparently the new technology it's DX11. That is their excuse. And uh, Rumlock again also brought up a very good point. How about that switch port? How are you going to implement DX11 on that? Well, so Magic. so so, he, so he, here's the thing too. Like so part part of the post is and I quote, <laughs> to keep these versions functional, we would need to invest significant time and resources in a replacement rendering pipeline such as Metal on Mac OS X mm-hmm. and OpenGL or Vulkan on Linux. They actually say that their current build process depends on DirectX 9. So it seems like Ryan and Timothy, who are um, the guys kind of responsible for the Linux port, they did something similar to indirect X to get the port up and running, which kind of seems a little out of character to them, but... Makes sense, though. Well, yeah. I mean, you can definitely tell, um, like, Ryan Ryan would have did it the old way that in... Ryan's excellent getting something up and running. Um, no one's like, hey, Ryan did it. It's very performant. But you could tell something... Like, Timothy did something to make it run really well. That's what I'm yeah. trying to get out. But we but, look but, at. But I, was, I, was, I was just going to say, like, yeah, but to to everyone else's point originally, yeah, you could just do it all in Vulkan, too, and then get, like, the big support for the Switch, Linux's, Windows's 10, 7 through 10, and Mac with uh, Bolt and VK. You could still have maintained all your platforms yep. and added more and simplified your code base, but you, you didn't, Brad. And you can Vulcan send it back would have been for the right refund choice. if you want. If you, I mean you, were the one that bought it through Steam. Everything else, womp, womp, deal with it. I did some, uh... Jordan, I thought we sprung for like the math code processor on this new Pedro. Fuck's up. I don't, no. Cause I asked I, it, I asked it to do some math and it just started licking itself. <laughs> now, yeah, it, granted, it's, it's mildly one, erotic, one, one, one but utterly one. useless to do maths. So no, I actually right, figured this out. Look at me for your maths. They, they <laughs> said, the combined percentage player base of Mac OS and Linux, this is from the Rocket Cars humans, they said is not 0.3%. So I went and looked up the player base of Rocket Cars. 50 million as of 2018. So uh, not 0.3% of 50 million, 150,000 players between Mac and Linux. So if we're highballing the forever price of Rocket League, which is $19.99. In refunds, that's about 30 mil. Yeah, Valve's not happy about that. Also, it's, it's yeah. all, also, no refunds also, on the DLC like, uh, microtransactions or anything like that. So those yeah. are just... Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's only for the base game. <laughs> that's what I was going to say. It's like, yeah. So, so they, maybe, they, maybe. they banged a lot on uh, selling, you know, the keys for the crates and the cars mm-hmm. and everything else. Yeah. So, so, so Kyle, yeah. Kyle Linux in, uh, in chat realm brings this up. And I think this might be it. The people on Linux and Mac are not buying the hats. This oh, is why that. they killed it. Oh, yeah. This is why they killed it. That hundred percent. That was it. It was cosmetics. But, um, <laughs> we do, we've been playing it for years in the after shows and, 
that comes to an end because once you pull like your Linux support for no other reason, apparently other than because fuck you, that's why we're not going to be yeah. talking your nonsense. We'll be playing grip in the after shows and, and uh, some left for bread. Uh, we'll, we'll be shopping around some ideas. It yeah, we'd rather happened. play a Windows game that's never made any bullshit pretenses Dude. about Linux and then hey, dropping hey, wait, support wait, wait, just because. We, 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 we got a we got a we got a trine we need to finish too. Oh, we also so got we some got some through. It's not there's like that there's too. A yeah. it, it, it sucks, <laughs> but that that's reality, man. Like you know, a few guys. So desolation. Yeah. So on that disappointment, let's talk about desolation. And uh, this one is a mod for Portal Two. And I guess if you are hoping to play any kind of Half-Life or Portal games nowadays that don't require head-mounted toasters, you're gonna have to pay attention to the modding community. And this one, well, it's um, it's been in development for a while. They say that uh, as they enter 2020, Desolation has been in active development for almost two years, so... They've been putting some work. Hopefully we'll see an actual downloadable version of it at some point. But yeah, it is basically the premise of the story is you're one of the test subjects and you wake up in one of the relaxation lounges. I want one where we get to play GLaDOS. Uh, Isn't it, wouldn't that just I mean, be like just a strategy maker? game? No, no. Yeah. You, you, you genuinely <laughs> just sit. You have to sit oh. for like six to eight hours. Then the person shows up and you can fight him. See, see, you know what? That actually gives me a cool idea for a game. It's sort of like Dungeon Keeper, except mm -hmm. like you have to make little challenges for your, your humans to try to kill them before they can get to the <laughs> yeah. end. Yeah. I, I, I actually think that's a cool idea. So do do you, you totally have the option to just squish them, though, if you're bored? It's like oh. a reverse puzzle game. Asymmetrical um, gameplay. I'd love that. <laughs> but yeah, this one is, uh, it very much seems to follow the same uh, line as uh, Portal 2, where you wake up in one of the relaxation uh, chambers and then you just get dumped into the facility and everything is just a little bit broken and you kind of have to make your way out. But uh, there is no downloadable version just yet. So mm -hmm. basically, I'm just uh, reading what they said on the website. So you monster. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, and it has liquid too! Yay! <laughs> yeah, they they they, impl they implemented one one interesting thing here is they implemented a sticky liquid. Apparently, the sticky liquid Giggity. was originally supposed to be in Portal Two, mm -hmm. but Valve couldn't come up with a solution that they like. Family so safe way of implementing it. That sounds mm -hmm. sticky. So mm. these these guys these guys took a crack at it, and that's that's kind of interesting. It's. I, I like I like when games are like take ideas that were kind of half implemented in the original game and flush them out. That's that's yes. kind of the cool thing about uh, the modding community is it enables that sort of environment. This does look yeah. well done, and but everyone, no one's a stranger to perpetual development mods for Half Life as well. Indeed. Oh yeah, no yeah. mods in general for video games. You get like a page with some really awesome looking screenshots, and then vaporware. It's like, oh, what happened to that <laughs> thing that we talked about yeah. three years ago? And it's like, poof, <laughs> smoke bomb. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that was the last thing that they ever posted. Huh. Mm. <laughs> womp, womp. All right. Coming up next, we got a new version of wine. We got some fancy new AMD cards that will not melt your computer and maybe a place to host your Godot games. Linux Gamecast comes out usually on Sunday, sometimes early on At least uh, you Mondays. didn't start off with looking for a good dicking. Looking for a good shooting. <laughs> Hot was going to get to that, Here but hey, that's my joke already taken care of. There's the punchline. Jordan, do the thing. You know, I, I was just trying to spare the viewing public. Like, maybe they don't have 10 minutes. <laughs> oh. It was going to be two, maybe three at most, okay? <laughs> I, I, I got exactly one in me. Okay. If you want to support this nonsense, head on over to linuxgamecast.com. We got a support menu with many, 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 many options like PayPal and Bitcoin and wish lists and Patreon and Libra Pay. It's pretty great. Uh, if you check out our wish lists, you can help uh, populate the studio with the, 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 this, this. Our I can write for your name on a piece oh. of glass behind me and that shit blinks that's worth it for the oh, price yeah. of admission alone. it's so bl it's so <laughs> blinky but you know if, if you send us some stuff we you can maybe send us a note that we have to read on stream that's and you true can make us say a bunch of goofy goofy nonsense and we'll appreciate you forever you can be a fine upset you gotta be you know? careful when you make that damn thing blink too because that first shot seizure mode <laughs> it straight up is seizure mode you if you have epilepsy you will die um, <laughs> or you'll find out if you do <laughs> 
Uh, check out our Patreon, <laughs> patreon.com slash linuxgamecast. You get a lot of cool stuff for becoming a Patreon, like access to the show notes, access to our Discord channel. Um, you can suggest stories in the show notes. You can yell at us in the show notes. You got the pre-pre-super shows in, where you can hear us talk about how to teach ve- teach teenagers how to drive vehicles. <laughs> teach Ven how to drive to No. Teach Ven how to drive a teenager. <laughs> That's the show title. Drive um, a stone. You're going too fast. Here's to you, Mrs. Stone and Son. Jesus loves oh, you more than you can That's know. an advanced strat. I'm going to be a old codger. You're going yes. to slow down. Yeah. I, I own a uh, cardigan, too. I can pull yeah. this off. Uh, the, the other cool thing with being a Patreon is we do a bunch of multiplayer games. Uh, we're going to be testing out a new one at the end of this stream. I do some on Thursday, then occasionally does some on Fridays. And if you're a Patreon, you get first dibs if you want to come yeah, play do. with us. Also, it's we did good. things like, um, hey, we're not playing the regular leagues. We're playing this other game. And guess what? We just gave out a bunch of keys to our patrons. So, ta yep. Magic. And we got, we got a brand new Patreon we got to thank. A raspberry or... <laughs> got to thank. For thank, sure. Thanks you a bunch. Yep. Dude, being uh, a patron is awesome. That's how we finance this nonsense. That's no ads, and uh, we can set a budget, and we can do cool shit. It's yeah. really neat. Well, okay, well, there, there, there is one ad, and that's for the LGC merch. If you go to store.linuxgamecast.com, <sighs> you can coach Gee, yourself. Jordan, you're e-begging. Nothing. You're e-begging, Jordan. <laughs> I am. Watch, watch me prostrate myself. It's really, really e-whoring, disturbing. baby. Next level. I'm going to rip my clothes off and grease myself up with some mayonnaise. Oh, with man. Do we? Some, you're going to some Vegas. Some hell elks mayonnaise. Do I, do I have time to overnight you like the Letting Scheme cast face off shirt so you could show up with yourself on a shirt? Yes. You, yes. I, 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 I would do that and like Hulk Hogan it too. Just like, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, we, we got hoodies. We got stickers. We got men's tees. We got ladies tees. If you want to wear Frank or myself in your cleavage, you can. It's pretty great. I think that does it for us. Jordan's the right in the middle. So yeah. Cleavage yeah. face right there. That's pretty cool. <laughs> oh, one thing that we added as a little bit of a bonus, man, making it possible as a. Uh, all of this nonsense because people like the uncut so we're releasing that now in addition to the video version as a podcast so you get that on your custom rss feed where you get a bunch of you know anytime we do a little something extra and all that plus you get some early cracks that especially videos that i'm working on and and i'm like hey what do you think of this before we release it to the general public so thank you for your continued support lgc cares Indeed. All right, Ven, tell us about your brand new Radeon card that you're buying. Oh, man, my hot, <laughs> hot Sapphire Pulse AMD Radeon Pulse. RX 5600 XT review. It's super fast. Or is it? I don't know. It depends on which BIOS you have on it. <laughs> yeah. It's this true. comes it's from it. PCPer.com. All of this nonsense in our show notes. You can find them. And they're out, man. You can pick one up. And really, depending on what what is this one? This is Navi 14, so 22 computes, 1408 stream uh, price. Navi 10. I'm reading Navi 14. Because you're That's one the 5500. Okay. Reading is hard, I know. It sucks. <laughs> Moving on. I'll hang on. Uh, um, no, no, you go ahead with the um, comparison I was about to fucking do. Go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say, <laughs> basically, a- if you look at that chart, you can tell that the 5600 uh, XT is basically the 5700. That's it. Back to it the is. BIOS update, motherfuckers. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, here's the big there. thing, man. For 299, you can get a 2060. That's really your big takeaway from all of this. Cause check this out, man. When I heard this was released and I saw the benchmarks, I'm like, wait a minute, Nvidia's slipping because Nvidia didn't release three additional cards to compete with it. It's like, what's going on? What be this madness, man? But they did have a little bit of an oopsie with that BIOS because what ended up happening was the board partners, they're not doing redesigns for this. They're like, hey, man, well, we got the ones for the 5700s. So we're just going to slap the same cooler on there. It'll be great. We got all this extra headroom. And AMD's like, wait a minute. We can send you a better BIOS at the last fucking po- In fact, so late that you have product on the shelf right now that people are going to have to reflash to get this boost to make it a really nice card. Yeah, the, uh, the, uh, the memory bandwidth got increased uh, from 12 gigabits to uh, 14 gigabits, and the base clock got bumped up quite a bit as well. And yeah, it's it's performing about on par with the 2060, which is pretty nice. It's nice to see that AMD's coming out swinging with a lot of the uh, new mid-range stuff, especially now that mm-hmm. Navi support is stabilized on Linux. 
Um, and you don't have to go buy 5900s or 5800s on dirt cheap. Yeah. Little Sebastian, though, bye bye, Little Sebastian, didn't really give us a good look at the uh, Vulcan performance. Mm -mm. Um, all of these were uh, DirectX um, 11 and 12 games that he uh, done tested. But consider considering now that uh, the ACO compiler is out in Mesa, we got Linux 5.5 out. It's in the wild. That has the Navi yep. support as well. And now that uh, and with, with with the with the kernel five five Mesa nine three or nineteen point three ACO Wombo combo, how well does this run in Protonland? Because I'm I'm curious how it will stack up to Nvidia in terms of Proton performance. I don't know about the fifty six hundred XT, but uh, from my experience with the RX five seventy, which is generation old at this point. Mm -hmm. um, ACO makes a really big difference, not so much in like the amount of frames you get, but the frame timing. Games look a hell of a lot smoother. Um, just playing like doing the um, the Vulcan uh, benchmark on uh, the Talos principle. It's so much smoother with ACO on than without it. It it it's noticeable. So yeah. Ultimately, yeah. I think at the end of the day. <laughs> The big takeaway from this is, thank you, AMD. You made the 2060 cheap. Yeah, fifty dollars cheaper. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we got, we got, we got a new version. I mean, of you can't out. really buy it. It's sold out everywhere. But it, it, MSRP is down. Yes. <laughs> well, what, what do we think about like the new hubbub with the uh, 2060s? That that stupidly named one. I was talking about the last KO, week. The uh, KO. The EVGA KO. That has, uh, uh, it's got a 2080 GPU in it. Some it's just of a them do. One. Some of them do. So if you're, Sitting! If you're like, <laughs> yeah, it's like they kneecapped it. And they're like, hey, this is a completely different die. Yeah, it's got the 2080 die in it. And mm -hmm. turns out just like with the way the architecture is between the chips, higher compute performance on those and like blender and yeah. stuff like the, that. the gaming so, performance doesn't really no, see much of a difference from the regular 2060s yeah. but yeah the the compute performance good luck finding those yeah. kids <laughs> um but wine fine yeah. fine yep. fine point oh wine fine fun, point oh wine is fine <laughs> and That's five and wine. dive yeah um that got released this week um it's so there's there's a couple interesting changes on the change log here. So it looks like Wine is upstreaming the Proton approach of building Wine modules as DLL using MinGW. So and mm -hmm. more copy closely copying a Windows uh, directory structure. And the intention here is like this will make uh, Wine look more like an actual copy of Windows to stuff like EAC or other anti cheat software. EAC is still gonna fucking ban you because fuck you. That's why. But we're, they're they're taking steps to making that less likely to happen. Um, I'm also kind of curious with the next kind of stuff. Let's spe let's play the let's speculate on what got upstreamed because of Proton game. Yeah, um, they got uh, support for Vulcan 1.1 as well, as well as uh, input improved input device handling. So stuff like uh, controllers and driving wheels and whatnot should work better. They're also they've also fixed the multi monitor support, so you will have a specified display that you can use if you have like one free sync display and one G sync display, and you want to fuck around with that. You absolutely can. There's a host of other bug fixes, changes, updates, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I'm sure next week we're going to see a big old blog post like, "Here's what Proton contributed this time," and that will be kind of neat as well. And I look forward to in two weeks when we get the Proton update with Wine uh, 5.0. I wouldn't be opposed to that, but mostly what I really want is to see the continued effort to stop DRM slash anti cheat uh, stuff. Uh, to stop you from playing a game. Because mm -hmm. there's a lot of free-to-play games on Steam right now that you could otherwise play with Proton just fine, Paladins, uh, that you can't, because AC. So, yeah, I very much look forward to that. Everyone really wants is looking forward to that, and that's going to be a thing. Uh, this reality is no one wants to be to test it. <laughs> Yeah, also, yeah, no one wants to get also banned. Epic owns EAC and they don't want people to buy games on Steam. So they'll have to come up with an entirely new scheme once that gets hammered down. And they're like, oh no, <laughs> Sweetie will be angry. I wonder He'll... what the excuse will be after that. In that day, Sweetie's mustache grew three sizes. Is that um <laughs> Oh no, it's consumed the entirety of Epic Games. No. We're all gonna die. Go.io. It's free. That's true. Uh, so, uh, games, uh, GOTM.io games of the month um, is, well, I didn't know what it is, so I did a little bit of research. Uh, it is a ghetto game hosting service. It dodges uh, the creeps. Indeed. Or creeps. Uh, 
the, the and the bloods. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's a uh, it's a good hosting uh, service, and now they're saying uh, you can host your games the web clients at least for free. You got to export the uh, Gido manifest file, upload it, and lo and behold, you can distribute your game, which I guess is nice if you're making a Gido game and you want to get it out to as many people as possible and bypass some of the download requirements and whatnot. But Hey, it's definitely a thing. I wonder how I wonder how they're gonna attempt to monetize or pay for it. Uh, Ooh, yeah, that that's that, gonna get very that, costly very quick. Yeah, that's, that's not gonna be cheap. Mm-mm. I mean, there's ads down the side that even if you have an ad blocker on, they still show up. So uh, there's probably that. But you know, it's a way to make uh distribution of Godot games that much easier and say you have a bit of a prototype that you're working on and you want to share it and just throw it at people without having to you know explain to them how Godot works and without having to go through the trouble of actually creating a bit of a beta you can just export the um pck file put it up there and then people can just play your game hmm. that that would be great yeah <laughs> That's pretty cool. That's good to see. And it's an interesting tool. And it'll be interesting to see if people take advantage of it, though, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and it's good. Godot needs a bit more exposure. exposure. Yeah. I know people die of exposure a lot, but uh, yeah, it, it, it needs more games. You can fix that in Photoshop. <laughs> <laughs> You're so funny, Mark. I am. Dude, this isn't. However, and. Uh, Somebody stepping down as the maintainer of the integrated AMD encoder for OBS Studio. That shouldn't kind of worry you. Zaymar, little quick note. I mean, th- this actually does devolve into like a, you know, yes. internet thing. <laughs> but just to we'll get the opening in, Zaymar writes, this is my official notice that I'm stepping down for, as the maintainer position for the AMD encoder as I've had several disagreements with the only question maintainer, Jim. You might know Jim from Discord. Um, you, uh, I would also, I would also request to be removed from the OBS project team. Scorched Earth, me, is what he's saying. The integrated AMD encoder plugin is now lacking a maintainer. Deal with it. Dunk on you. Good luck. Whoever picks it up. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. You're cool. Fuck you. I'm out. I might have added a little bit of that for flavor, (laughs) but then this quickly devolves into walls of text to and basically koitsu came in and is like no all right no we're just not having any of that but reading you know i'm not as involved with the um development of obs as ven is but just reading this particular thread is like oh it's an ego clash thing <laughs> that's happening here all right it's not about you know who can code and who can't code no it's just straight up egos all right cool Live it <laughs> A little bit. Um, you know, I was 100% with him. I was like, oh, okay. Well, some, it's somebody piecing out, you know, as this tradition, if you're piecing out of a take a couple of parties. Yeah, shots. go out with a bang. Yeah, pew, pew, you know. <laughs> it's like, right, right, right. Then the dude got down to the um, volume meter in OBS. And I was like, motherfucker. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Instantly had my attention. And I was like, you know what? I Because I, I've never seen the first bit of logic. Behind the volume meter in OBS. How long was it before we had numbers on it? Remember? It wasn't until like version 21, I think. I was like, oh, it's no longer a, a kaleidoscope of like question marks. But that now it has numbers on it. When I say it has numbers on it, because seriously, I don't know fuck all what these numbers are supposed to be. The closest thing they might match is here on my pro DAW, a K 20 meter. And you don't need to know what that is, nor should you. Um, that's the thing. But hey, I, I kind of get where he's coming from, but they're they're working. They're trying to OBS right now is kind of like reworking how they do stuff. And, you know, some people he's just like, yo, I don't feel like I'm being heard. And I get this idea. Jordan, what was your takeaway from how he's like it was something the way Google was shipping? Um yeah, some 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 yeah. libraries that were which was the with wrong like way. It was the Chromium, like the, having the Chromium yeah. framework, which you need if you're mm-hmm. trying to build the uh, OBS um, Linux browser. Yeah, so I, I, browser I, I mean, integration stuff from source. You kind of need that. <laughs> I try. I try. I tried to read through this. I don't have a dog in this horse, man. Nope. So just OBS because you use everything Thursday. <laughs> yeah, but but like here's the thing though. I was actually curious. Are they talking about like the actual like? AMD specific software encoder or is this like a hardware module? 
it's for the X two six five. Um, the what do they call it? Yeah. Whatever that yeah. is called, yeah. Uh, it's yeah. the AM, uh, AMD specific GPU encoder that they use for X two six five. Yeah, but but uh, to to your point, Ben, this is this seems like a lot of like inter project drama that I I really don't care about unless it's like, well, now this thing in OBS will just stop working. I always get a little bit nervous with because the very grateful to have a Linux version, but we I've definitely seen you know. The public facing is, hey, tell us how could we make it more usable, and when, and I've seen suggestions just get like, no, nah, we're not going to deal with it. You know, things like if you've been an IRC with a uh, OBS, you are familiar with. We don't run Linux, so uh, feel free to submit a pull request uh, from yep. the team with OBS, and it's like, ooh, so. You know, there's like a lot of bonus SOTUS features that hinge on having integrated browser support, yes, which like Linux doesn't Discord, have. And Discord we've been integration. caught, yeah, and Twitch integration. We've been caught in the spiral of, can we get those features? And they're like, well, uh, the OBS doesn't have a Linux browser support, like, but could you integrate it? And like, oh, we'll look into that. And that's been a perpetual thing of like years now. Yeah. So I don't know. Also, maybe, maybe, maybe you should start a dramatic thread on their GitHub. Maybe no. that'll get some attention. <laughs> Listen, man, I, I'm just an end user with a build environment. And that's all I am. I, I'm just internet static going, oh, go at it. Have at it. Hopefully get everything sorted out. Like they are doing some work there on their back. And they're like, we've got to restructure some things. And I think they realize that and it's, you know, working as volunteers. I'm familiar with when you, oh, dance monkey. I'm like, eh, you know, I'm like, mm, mm. careful with that. <laughs> You know, 100%. careful with that axe, Eugene. Hack, hack, hack. Laka sounds like a dog's name. Laka. Well, it's so, a sounds like a potato pancake. It's basically what if you took Retro Arch and Emulation Station and you made an entire distribution out of them. Well, this is what this is. And uh, Laka, it works on 64-bit x86-64. It works on the Raspberry Pi 1 and the Raspberry Pi 0, the 2, the 3, and the 4. So basically, if it's a Raspberry Pi or if it's a 64-bit processor, you can run Laka. And it, what it does is the moment you load it, it fires up RetroArch. That, that, that's it. And the new version, uh, 232 with RetroArch 184, is uh, now available for download. You can um, still do everything that you could do previously. One of the things that they improved was the uh, playlists. And one of the things that they used to do, which was whenever there was an update that changed one of the cores in RetroArch, one of the emulators, basically, uh, it would basically screw up any kind of playlists that you had for with the games. But now, uh, if you update one of the cores or if a core is changed for a better one, the playlists are actually kept so it no longer it, the way that they say it's like um thanks to this new uh clean play uh, playlist feature removing a core is no longer considered a breaking change when gonna take Laka. some of the sport out of it yeah <laughs> so the, but the, yeah the other thing that comes with uh, the 232 release is the time has come for them to tier their hardware support because Pedro said they support a bunch of Raspberry Pis. They also support other stuff like Odroids and Panda boards and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And, you know, running emulator boxes and ARM boards is fun, but mm -hmm. supporting the myriad of them is not, and I can oh. speak from personal experience about that, especially when, you know, they get discontinued or they fall out of popularity. And here they're basically saying, yeah, there's a bunch of them that we, need, that we would otherwise need to support that you can't buy anymore that none of us have, so we can't really test it. So now they're, they're tiering it. So now they have, uh, if you're on a Raspberry Pi or if you're on a 64-bit processor, you get tier one support. Everything else... We'll get to it if we can get to it, which I mean is is fair, right? Because otherwise you have to support literally there, all this. There, there's one other something high. you you should always <laughs> worry about if you're down to well, if you send me one support, yeah, <laughs> that's when it's time to go buy something else because Indeed. you're on borrowed time. Yeah, yeah, um, and they did yeah. introduce a new core, which uh, probably speaks to Ven's heart, which is the Neo Geo CD. You can play Neo Geo CD games now on Laka. You're a disturbed yeah. young man. Yeah. <laughs> the, 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 You're the only Neo Geo 
owner that I could think of. So yeah. you, you, I, did, you, I don't think you had the disc one, did you? You had the no. uh, car- peasant. Had a I had the AES. <laughs> yeah. uh, the, the, the other thing here oh, is apparently uh, three three is on the horizon. They're going to be releasing it. Yeah, it's uh, it's also open elect based as well. So it's a nice yep. lightweight Pi focused distribution. That's pretty sweet. Good. Check, check it out. Dude, uh, open gotta, source gotta, crack cocaine. Yeah, yeah, I got to dangle that heroin needle right in front of Pedro's mm, face. You know, great. you want you want to chase that dragon, don't you, baby? Oh, yeah, you do. Look, Listen, I tried to chase the dragon, the and I webs. got I caught up to it, and I got very confused. Uh, so this is Rosetta Stone. It's a Hearthstone simulator uh, Hearthstone. using C plus plus. Hearthstone. 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 Yarr, Stone. Sit down Pirates by the hearth. Pay, play Hearthstone. Yes. <laughs> Stone uh, but yes, you do sit down by the hearth. That's what the innkeeper says right at the beginning of the game. Uh, and this one, it's a simulator. It's built with C++ use uh, with some reinforced learning. That's how they describe it. So it's like, okay, so it's a the Hearthstone simulator that you can just build and have the AI go at it and there's even a GUI that you can also build and it's like okay I'm gonna go through this set this up it's like, uh, I'm too stupid to figure this out I did have a look at the documentation I did have a look at everything else it's like the fuck am I supposed to do here exactly because I wanted it's like okay maybe I can watch two AIs actually play a game of Hearthstone against each, against each other great I, I, yeah, no, I'll totally do that. I couldn't. I, I, it built. It starts. It's clearly doing something. Uh, um, one of the CPU threads on my thirty seven hundred X is why are they that 100%, violently but, against screenshots of anything about that? I've, I've been digging around in the background while you've been blabbering, and I can't find it. I don't. I, I, th- I think part of it is like the actual card art isn't implemented because that's when they get into trouble. Or any. Well, um, I, I, the placeholders would be fine. I just like I was going through their YouTube video presentations, and it's all text too. I'm like, I, it's already fine. I, I, yes. I, 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 I guess <laughs> maybe they're they're also waiting on implementing some more cards because I got the basic and classic set fully implemented. I can draw uh, And the uh, <laughs> oh man, I, I want to see an entire card game based entirely <laughs> on Ven's chicken scratching. That'd be amazing. Chicken man. No, but uh, but they're going to be adding the um, adding the cards from the expansions and the adventures. And whatnot as they go. So I, I get it as like an, an automated uh, deck tester because that's what I got from like starting it on the CLI Hearthstone and actually Battle going chest. through the menu. Yeah. Uh, go, seeing everything is like, okay, so you can build a deck and then how do I make the AIs test the decks against each other? It's like, that's what I couldn't figure out. Do you out. think they'll I'm implement stupid. anything to um, make the decks harder? That, that would require a raging clue. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, sometimes you run into hard decks. <laughs> some, some, sometimes you don't have anything but a VT200 terminal in front of you, and you got to play some video games. Well, I, I hope they draw some um, very glorious decks for their program. Indeed. Uh, so terminal phase 1.0 it is a terminal game it's for it's for late night deployment fun times when you're staring at a terminal and you're waiting for t- for traffic to come through and goddamn you just need something to do and you don't have rogue installed um yeah so it, it, it's it's a shmup. <laughs> It, it's done entirely in the terminal. It does some neat stuff, like it has like parallax scrolling implemented, which I thought right. was kind of neat yep. for a uh, for a terminal. Game. <laughs> That's pretty handy. This is like um, the internet, like morning. Has boredom gone too far? Yes, <laughs> but I, yeah, it, it's it's def- it's defender with in your terminal. That's pretty much it. Um, they uh, it, it's it's supposed to be run in a terminal. I, I I don't know what else to say about this other than yeah, shoot 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 S's, man. Fuck Dude, those I'm, S's. I, I'm it's a terminal so shmup. Yes, please. I I'm all for having more uh CLI games that are, you know, uh D star star M the roguelike or hangman cuz those are my usual go-tos. I'm, I'm sorry, it's pronounced to beep him the roguelike. Um, the roguelike. <laughs> to beep. <laughs> to beep. What I'm really really always This is legit a terminal game. This is not. Hey, look! This is a terminal game made in Unity. That's only three gigs. We haven't Oof. seen that yet. Oh no! That would be coming past people next next but week. <laughs> next next week. week, man, it's happening. DX eleven. We're gonna be running Proton <laughs> D- D- Vulcan. D- D- DX twelve to run it. <laughs> DX twelve done in the terminal, baby. Oh. RTX on. 
Let's get the RTX uh, hell out of All here. right. Coming up next, I would tell you what we're throwing chairs at next, but we might crash. Tell me R, tell me T, tell me sweet little X. Sweet little X. And we crashed. It's me, your foul Jordan, the guy who gets crappy songs stuck in your head. And I'm here to tell you about the Czechquisition where the accused game must survive trial by Fedora, Neon, and Dib Wang. And only then the question can be asked. It's fun. This week, we're taking a look at Xenoraptor, not Xenopastor. I was very disappointed. So sad. <laughs> Too bad. It's developed by Peter Clearly. Cleary. Done clearly. on Unity. Clearly, Cleary. You can pick it up on <laughs> Unity. Pick it up on Steam, not Unity, for 10 bucks. Pick it up on Unity. That's show title. Store.unity.com. What is it? Take control of a cyber dragon, not a bad dragon, and annihilate swarms of rocket propelled chainsaws. All right. All right. Mm -hmm. Either online or via land. That's a lie. In this high speed, (laughs) high skill, eight player co op twin stick shooter. Dev did send us some keys over Curator Connect. So thank you you for that, Peter. And we're going to we're going to play your game. How to run on Debian. Dude, uh, Debian 10.2, check it out on the thread ripping um, first gen. Um, what, what was it like? 1920X, something like that. Uh, 32 gigs of RAM, 2060. All that hot nonsense. Uh, it does run out of the box over 100 for at 2160p. That's what it ran at. And that's just, I kept it going there. Not a problem. That's everything on 11. And it crashes a bunch. I'm going to talk mm-hmm. about the crashing a lot. Um, not the fun kind of. Dude. Uh, it it's not the fun type of crashing, man. You're like, oh, boom, I crashed into ship. No, nay. This is, the, oh, hi, desktop. It's really quick at that, very performant as well. Going directly back to the desktop. It happened once, like right in the first zone when you're playing on Earth. But by the time I get to the Mars, it was like a smorgasbord of spite crashes. And I kind of got bored with it at like the 45 minute mark because I couldn't get past Mars. I couldn't even get to Mars. I really wanted to start <laughs> that reactor. Um, So let's look at it. Fun. Uh, first things first, uh, that sunlight from that star, that's white. Sorry. <laughs> Got my inner in Neil deGrasse Tyson on that, man. Uh, I was getting that away. That said, we do like to take a look at smaller titles from time to time because you know what? You know what? Sometimes you find the occasional gem. Hollow Knight was a game no one knew about, and we didn't discover it, but we're like, hey, Hollow Rune, Knight. Rune, Rune, Runefall, solid choice. Tesla mm-hmm. uh, versus Lovecraft. Mm-hmm. Like little titles, so we got to try them out every now and then. This is very much not the case with Xenoraptor. Not at all. While it is, in fact, a bullet hell space shooter, that's all it is. And only just. Um, you are greeted with your bog standard menu, followed by fuck and or all in the way of instructions. So, set forth. You will spin, you will pew, you can dodge. You can fire the alt, which is a rocket, and you collect coolant, which you will be running out of very quickly. Now, for something that's been in development since 2014, doesn't really have much to show for it. I mean, it's kind of your bug standard shmup-ish type device. Man, multiplayer, it does exist, but you might have guessed this, where I'm going with this. Vacant, hollow, empty. This game is available not just on Steam, it's available on the PS4 and Switch. I know, I was amazed as well. I'm going to say, if you if you want some solid pew-pew, like, Look at something that's free, that's eight years old. Let's stack it up against Mars, a ridiculous space shooter, something we covered on this very show all those years back. And it kind of blows this out of the water, man. Um, If you want something that's going to mix things up, you know, throw you some new sauce, check out Waves 2 Notorious. We talked about that uh, last year. This Xenoraptor, this is an early access game cosplaying as a finished product. In my not so humble opinion, then again, I'm a guy on a Linux show wearing a wizard robe. For whatever that's worth. I'm just going to say, man, skip this one chair. Yeah, on uh, Fedora 30, 64 bit with the 67K i7 and the GTX 1080Ti. I mean, it, it it runs it runs fine. You get like I got about like what four hundred frames a second at UHD before it started crashing. I don't know though. The weird parallax scrolling in the background kind of gives me whiplash, especially when you're zipping in and about. It's oh, it's super distracting. When when you knock it down to a 1080p window, it's a little bit better. But then apparently that made it extra crashy, so I had to go back to full screen. <laughs> um, yeah. So so Pe- Pedro, I, I I read through your thing in the chair position. You're like, yeah, lower, lowering the graphical setting helps. No, it it did not. 
it uh in fact it crashed faster when i knocked everything down to the lowest settings yeah it helped so, for me it was a I mean, the video you're boost, watching man. now is only this long because it kind of stopped crashing long enough for me to get it <laughs> right so th there there you go very very inconsistent i couldn't even get you know, you're talking about the mars level i can't even get to the mars level because it crashes just after i beat the boss oh. and i and i took i took a couple cracks at that too which is way more patient than i usually am with these sorts of games um i mean sound wise it's got a it actually has a really nice soundtrack i i quite enjoyed it um it, it gets you it gets kind of pumped but you know fun wise i mean it's it's, it's a bullet hell shmup it, it, you got you got a rail gun and a spray gun. You're never going to use that rail gun. You might use your missiles sometimes. You eventually get a flat cannon. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I wouldn't know. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like like Vince said, other than that, it's pretty box standard. It doesn't do anything new or revolutionary. And yeah, I'm shops are a hard sell for me. I'm not usually a fan of them, especially bullet hells, because I just squirrel away the fuck out. And yeah. I really, really, the one thing that's redeeming quality is the soundtrack. It 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 really matches the action well. It gets you pumped, and yeah, if it would just be a mediocre shmup, even if it wasn't a crashy. Mess. Do you think it'd be better and, if the soundtrack kept crashy playing mess? when it crashed? <laughs> <I'd>, <laughs> but, but after the process died, I'd be like, "Ooh, that, that's so spooky! Oh, no. So spooky! It gets the spookiest score though of one chair." Yeah, and over here uh, in uh, KD Neon Land with the. Ryzen 7 3700X, the, well, the, and the GTX 1080, it, yeah, it, uh, it's Unity, so it actually does, uh, 144 hertz if you, uh, turn on V-Sync, so we know that the Unity V-Sync actually works as intended, but yes, much like Ven and Jordan, I had several crashes, uh, after, basically after you lose and your ship Cyber Dragon thing explodes, uh, it feels like it triggers a countdown and the game crashes like a minute or two after that that or the mars level is just especially crashy uh either way nope. i can't seem to keep it going uh past 15 minutes at a time so that's the longest i've ever had that's about the length of this particular video that you're looking at if you're watching the video version and i'm not the only one ben jordan there's also a huge massive thread on the steam forums of people complaining about the crashes uh so yeah apparently reducing the graphical settings is helping somewhat with uh reducing the crashiness but yeah th for me that was limited uh for jordan it didn't help at all so it made it worse <laughs> yeah your uh your uh, mileage may vary very very much so but is it fun? Well, mm. that's the thing. I was having fun. I was having a lot of fun, more fun than I usually have when it comes to shmups, uh, because this game manages to be very, very fun. I'm, I and don't then it mind the dodge mechanic once you're like, oh, that's the thing. It's, it's okay. Yeah, yeah no, uh, the game actually f makes you feel like a badass when you're dodging and exploding everything around you and just it, scraping does it, does by. Does it make you feel like a bad dragon? It's, yeah, it kind of does. <laughs> you just want to bond a little bit. But yeah, no, crashing is never good, especially in video games. Um, even if it was a terrible video game, which this one isn't, at least not at its core, it would still just be compounding technical issues on top of a terrible game. But this game could, in theory, be awesome if it didn't crash so goddamn much. I might come back to it at some point to see if the whole crashiness thing is fixed but right now i i can't recommend it i mean you, i had you, fun with it whoops. for the 40 minutes that there i could put up with all the crashiness so two chairs <laughs> Here, here's the thing i'm curious because like they actually unlike steam they actually have quality control on the switch store mm -hmm. so i wonder if it's extras if it's even more stable <laughs> you know switch. actually i do believe because i saw the developer in the forums because i too was like wait a minute now you, you're probably thinking like wait a minute i went to the store page and it doesn't listen the developer sent us copies over Curator, Curator Connect, Curator for Connect. Linux to a show called Linux Gamecast, and there's native Linux binaries, son. So, oh yeah, yeah. But uh, oh, one thing I noticed about the store page: it doesn't list online multiplayer. Mm -hmm. the, the functionality is there, it but is there. it's not in yeah. the store page I, at all. I was, I was, I was actually going to see if you wanted to try it out, but the game just crashed too much. So, there is yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, to the game's credit, I always like to say something nice, something positive. It worked out of the box with the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox wireless controller. No issues. It did. 
I, I was I was actually going to ask: Did you play that with the keyboard and mouse, or did you play it with the? I initially uh, tried it with the keyboard and mouse. I you know after looking at the, I tried with the mouse, rudimentary yeah. menu system, I didn't have much hope of anything working. But I did my due diligence and tried both of them. And they did work just fine. Actually, it's yep. a lot more entertaining um, when you play it that way. Yeah, I, I I started with the controller. I'm like, how's the keyboard and mouse work? And I I got too used to using the controller, so I just stuck with that. And mm. then the game crashed. Yeah. Verdict right. crash. <laughs> Verdict. Just just kill the segment now. We crashed. Coming up next. Coming up next. We got some poorly timed emails about Rocket League and some apologies for the poorly timed emails. And we finally reached the end of the show. It's uh it's been a wild ride. Not really. No. It's it's it 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 was another Linux game cast weekly. So Chances are you probably know what to do at this point, but if you don't, if this is the first time you're watching this, somehow, I'm sorry, but you can go to LinuxGameCast.com, hit the contact button, and let us know exactly uh, how we could improve this, make it worse, Fine. make it better, who knows, send us some hate mail, and we'll feature it right here, right now, uh, just make sure uh, you pick LGC Weekly from the show box, Wesker. or Wesker. you could ask Jordan for relationship advice. Or if you're a game developer and you'd like to um, let us have a look at your game, by all means, we want some keys. Hell no, I just saw what you did to that place. game from 2014 that was on sale. If, 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 you're, if you're a game developer and you're looking for a boyfriend, <laughs> hit me up. Call me. There's that too, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Jordan's relationship advice is... Call uh, a whisker. <laughs> gotta, gotta, Odd. Gotta, gotta, gotta listen to the song of my people. <laughs> <laughs> it goes wo la la now we do actually have a little bit of email this week from uh, our latest patron so just, oh, for instance, yeah. I don't know <laughs> gonna read it anyways anyone want to take this while I'm moving the uh, cameras yeah sure, sure why not this is this is from this is from <laughs> our latest patreon <laughs> and <laughs> says hello i was watching lgc weekly episode 387 and saw that you were reporting on a new rocket cars update i wonder why you still do so despite the fact that epic's purchase of rocket league will according to reports a segment of which is below make the game epic score store exclusive for non-existing players this means that new players who wish to purchase and play the game on linux including for joining the after show will ha will have a harder time after this actually happens probably having to resort to using wine for both the epic scores epic score epic store and game mm. well as it turns out <laughs> and then your fears are entirely unfounded <laughs> Retorts. Just to clarify, I sent my previous contact about Rocket League before it was announced that they're officially gonna kill it. Situation just sucks. Yep. Yep. <clears throat> yeah. Yep. 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 Yeah, it really does. <laughs> there's uh there's there's really no way to spin that. Now I understand fully completely if you have a crippling addiction to Rocket League. Nothing short of buying a Windows 10 license. I mean you you're you're gonna find a way. You're gonna buy a PS4 if you're like, all right, fine. You're still going to end up getting those ass banjos. Or, 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 or a Switch. Or a Switch. Yeah. Don't get the Switch Lite, though, if you want to play it in something larger than, what, a 7-inch screen? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. 7-inch, 720p. <laughs> this is true, man. Dude, okay. I don't know. Dak Maybe they're going to find a way to make uh, DX11 run on the Switch. Oh, man, life Using finds a way. this thing called wine. <laughs> Maybe we can give ourselves a big hug and everyone go help out the Super Tux Cart team because they technically have an arena with a ball at it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Katana actually brought this up in the show notes. I had meant to say that while we were discussing the story, but it would be real. It would be a great fuck you if like for Super Tux Cart 1.2, they're just like, yeah, we fully implemented Rocket League. Have fun. <laughs> yeah. Do it. <laughs> super Crux. We, super Whiskers. S S super Crux Tart? Yeah. Yes. Crux Tart. Rocket Tux Cart. Yes. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Just. <laughs> We're done. On that bombshell, let's cue the music. You can always find us around 8.30 Eastern Standard Moon Time. Put us all over your face, chest, and neck. You know you want to. Um, An hour earlier, if you're a patron, hop in the Discord. We're live doing the audio-only stream. Play the home game. If you want to get in touch with me, just at Vin on Twitter or, uh, wait, no, at Vin Stone on Twitter, at Vin on mast.letixgamecast.com. Federated social media stuff. 
I am the cruxiest of the tarts. I'm Jordan Swung. You can find me on Twitter at the Burning Fool or on our Mastodon, where if I remember to post, I will at Projo Mastodon Yeah, Pedro, you on that still? You on that steez? I am all the porn that you get to see when you click on the federated timeline on Mastodon. Cen- cen- uh, censor this man, Ven. Blur no. his face out. <laughs> no. <laughs> I am also on Mastodon. You can totally follow me. Uh, I think it's at unaccounted for. I'm pretty sure it's That's at unaccounted Pedro's for. That's Pedro's way. I'm on Mastodon if Google Chrome remembers my password. Uh, and um, well, Not exactly as it's on, on both Mastodon Google, Google Chrome Plus. and Firefox. So I have a bit of a buffer. It's also on Twitter at unaccounted for. Just to, yeah, just do that. Let's roll the credits for the people that pay the bills. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> look! Look! Look at these people. They're, they are so slippery, but so durable. Double durable. It's the double D, man. For durable and also durable. <laughs> so original, and man. Dank. Dank. <laughs> like. <laughs> Episode <laughs> Call <laughs> XX420 69 Party Patreons are there in <laughs> Mr. Fox Dog. That's a lot of X's. <laughs> it is. Empty. The Atomic Ass, Bob <laughs> Ramp, Hapo, One more Mike Vin G, Diesel to show up. Mac Geek, Scoot. <laughs> Aldeus. Aldeus. No. Yeah, I said, said the Hapla. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to commit this mis- list to memory. My geek. And Scoot! Scootsy Bootsy. And the regular, regular horse ass producers like Cheaper Broadcasting and Strider <laughs> and Eric and Jill Green. Bruno. Paul. You know. Nathan. S- Pennywise. Eric. Sildax, Ross Mawada. Bertain, Chris. Veritanu. Rudy. 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 North Ranger. Rudy. Rudy. Colin. Echto, Earl, Max, System T, Yabo, Stony Rudy, Fish, Dan W, Michelle, Mike W, Mike W, Sims, Christopher. Nicole, probably need to throw a comment in there. Igo, David S, Gaius, Stony I'm, Fish. I'm, I'm glad they Michael, got removed from Dan W, Mike W, the Targos, Nicole, Vertnog, Wittersell, Aldeus, Rock, and of course our latest Dirty Patreon, Gozo Two Thousand. Chad. Good luck. <laughs> Down the fire everyone. Peace. Five dudes. <laughs>